Scientists at the Stowers Institute are investigating many different kinds of cells, including a group called neural crust cells. What are neural crust cells and why study them? These cells form in a vertebrate embryo's brain and spinal cord, migrate over long distances, and eventually mature into a variety of cell types. Neural crust cells are crucial building blocks in the developmental processes that shape an embryo. If you are wondering how all this shaping and overall development occurs, think about the popular paper folding tradition of origami. So initially the embryo starts as three flat sheets or layers of cells. And in the same way that you fold sheets of paper and you bend them uh, and shape them to produce an animal that you might recognize as a frog, uh, the same bending and shaping and folding of these sheets of, of cells uh, give rise to what we recognize as a human embryo and then ultimately the adult form. Since basic biological processes are nearly the same in all living organisms, Findings made in model systems, such as mice or fish, can shed light on mechanisms responsible for diseases in humans. Neural crest cells are one of the fundamental building blocks of, of vertebrate embryos. Um, so they're born within about the first month of, of human gestation, and they're a migratory cell population. So in the head, they're gonna move from the back of the head right out to the periphery of the of the face and they'll make most of the bones and, and cartilages of the face and skull. And then in the trunk they'll also uh, migrate an incredibly long distance into the gastrointestinal tract. If there's a problem with neural crest cell formation or migration or their maturation, then this can lead to conditions or disorders that we collectively call neurochristopathies. Within the head region, if there's a failure of neural crest cells to form properly, then this can lead to conditions such as treacher collins syndrome. treacher collins syndrome has an incidence of approximately 1 in 50,000. Individuals can either develop a spontaneous mutation or inherit a mutation from one of their parents. And there are individuals who may have a mutation but not know it because they're not severely affected. In the gut region, if neural crest cells don't mature properly into neurons and glia, then this can lead to a condition of gut development that we call Hirschsprung disease. So Hirschsprung's disease is fairly common for neurochristopathies. Um, it occurs in about 1 in 5,000 live births, and it has a male predominance. The gut is unable to relax, allowing stool to pass, and so you end up getting um, sort of this backup and you get abdominal distension, um, severe constipation, pain, and it has to be surgically corrected. Now one of the problems is that all of these events are taking place within the first two months of pregnancy. So this makes it very, very difficult to detect. Our lab uses both mouse and zebrafish models to study the three genes involved in Dreacher Collins syndrome. This movie shows the neural crest cells, which are migrating in green, and they're going to migrate and populate the head of the zebrafish. So I can use this movie to understand the normal pattern of neural crest cell migration. Specifically, I'm looking at vitamin A metabolism and how this can be tied into Hirschsprung's disease. So we take in vitamin A into our diets and it's metabolized to the active form retinoic acid. And what we found so far is that retinoic acid is important early in development before neural crest cells have actually entered into the foregut. And so what we think is that this retinoic acid signal is somehow important into telling neural crest cells where to go and when to go and how to get there. So one of the reasons this project is so exciting is that it has this ability to maybe um, revolutionize the way that we look at human births. You can kind of give the analogy to folic acid, which is the poster child um, for scientific research in this regard. We know that folic acid can prevent neural tube defects. And additionally, we know now that women should be taking folic acid supplements prior to and during the beginning of their pregnancies to prevent these um, neural tube defects. We'd like to find something similar that could become part of a, a prenatal supplement that, like an insurance policy, would be somewhat protective of the embryo to prevent the onset or prevent the severity of craniofacial anomalies or other neurochristopathies. Figuring out how neural crest cells contribute to these disabling disorders 
keeps Paul Trainer and his team busy in the lab. By examining neurochristopathies at the level of genes and molecules, they are helping to pave the way for the discovery of therapeutic answers to these problems.